So welcome to Cellox Medical's presentation of the Cellox EMS technology. My name is Andrew Hogarth and I head up the Research and Development Division. So I'll now give you a quick overview of what this presentation will include. We'll start with looking at what exactly Cellox EMS is and then cover the development history of Cellox. We'll then discuss Cellox technology and really take that back to basics to the raw materials right through to the finished product. It's important then to look at the mode of action, not only of the granules itself, but of actually the, the fully finished product in its gauze format. We will then discuss the benefits of Cellux EMS over other traditional hemostats available on the marketplace, where to use the product and how to use it effectively. We will then look at the benefits for its use, specifically looking at how it's beneficial over other comp competitor products, how to apply the product, and then a little tips and tricks of anything that you may get feedback on from the market. As a conclusion, we then look at the production and sourcing process so you get a full idea of how this product is de delivered to you in a packed sterile condition. So as an introduction, the Cellux technology was originally developed to treat moderate to severe life-threatening bleeding on the battlefield. It has then been transferred into the civilian medical emergency environment to treat casualties both effectively and very quickly, where time is very much of the essence. Traditional techniques whereby applying gauzes and pressure are not always effective, particularly where the, the body's clotting cascade has been impaired either through trauma-induced coagulopathy or drug-induced coagulopathy. It is very important then, therefore, that the Celex technology is very fast acting and is very efficacious at the point of contact. So what exactly is Celex EMS? Well, Celex EMS is a versatile, fast acting solution for moderate to, to severe bleeding situations designed specifically for EMS providers. Its primary ingredient is based around kytosan and actually it's derived into a, a derivative of kytosan such that it works independently of the bod body's clotting mechanism. This is different to some traditional mineral-based hemostats that work by kickstarting the clotting cascade. And in by working in independently of the clotting cascade, it can act a lot quicker in life uh, emergency situations. Some of the benefits about Celox is it also clots hypothermic blood and also can be de delivered in a single pad that could be torn into several pieces allowing multi-layer in, in higher bleeding situations, but also to allow easier access in some of those smaller wounds. So if we take a look back at the development history of Cellox, we can see that there's been various formats throughout its history. It was originally developed in a granule format in a tear open pouch. One of the disadvantages of this was application to the wound site and actually treatment um, of it required specific first aid training. In order to try and direct the granules direct to the site of bleeding, it was then developed into an applicator, which then also allow it into smaller narrow wounds. Further to this, the granules were then coated onto a gauze, which is what the current EMS product delivers. In doing so, and packing the wound, the granules can be easily and conveniently delivered to the point of bleed. So let's go back to basics with the Celox technology. Celox is formulated from chitosan. Chitosan originates from shellfish. We predominantly use uh, shrimp um, and specifically use it and source it from the North Atlantic Ocean. The meat of the shrimp is, is obviously taken away into and used in the food industry and we actually use the waste from the food industry in the shells. The shells are then converted into chitin of which chitin is then converted into chitosan. Following which, Celex Medical then converts the Kaisersan into the Celex technology, which is a proprietary patented technology. So on this slide, we're going to look at how Celex differs from Kaisersan. There's a lot of literature that states that Kaisersan is a very effective hemostat. Well, actually, not all Kaisersan is the same, and Kaisersan in its natural form is not an effective hemostat. So how do we differentiate Kaisersan from Celex? Well, first of all, chitosan is a deacetylated form of chitin, which is a natural fibre. 
and chitin itself is the second most abundant naturally occurring amino polysaccharide. Chitin itself is actually insoluble in aqueous media, so when we go on to the mode of action for cellox, you will see that that is a very key part of the process and that cellox is actually soluble in aqueous medias. Chitin itself is only soluble in acidic conditions due to the protonation of the amine group. And in developing the cellulose technology, we have already created that acidic condition and protonated the amine group. Chitin itself has very limited absorbency and when in contact with blood and bodily fluids does not create a gel, it creates a slurry-like material that is ineffective at treating bleeding. It also has low mucoadhesion properties, which is another key performance parameter of cellox. So what is cellox? Well, cellox is basically chitazan converted into its salt form. It also is soluble in nature because we've acidified that chitazan. It has a high absorbency potential, greater than 500% weight for weight, and therefore has, has the ability to absorb high volumes of blood, helping create that viscous gel which chitazan doesn't. It also exhibits higher mucoadhesion properties, which help ensure that the cellulose technology will adhere to the surrounding skin and keep that clot in place. Let's describe cellulose's mode of action. And we're, in this slide, we're particularly looking at the granules and the next slide will go into the gauze. So cellulose granules are applied directly to the site of bleeding. That is an important point. It has to be over the site of bleeding. On application to the site of bleeding, the cellulose will absorb the blood and other bodily fluids and form a, a viscous gel-like plug over that, that site of bleed. It also will bond to the surrounding tissue and create a shell of this pseudoclot over the site of bleed, preventing any further blood loss. At the base of this gel, clot or pseudo clot um, the actual gelling properties then create a, a conducive environment which allows clot formation under this gel like plug so in essence the product will absorb fluid it forms the gel plug it adheres to the tissue keeping it in place and it helps the body naturally form the clot underneath so we've just described the granule mode of action. So let's look at the gauze mode of action. You can see from the diagram in the top right hand corner, there is actually two layers of gauze um, in, in play here. And at the point of the site of bleeding, you've got the granules. Between the two layers, you've got two layers of granules and then an upper layer of granules as well. So what happens when the product is applied to the site of bleeding? Well, the granules in contact with the blood will form that pseudo clot we described in the previous slide. There will also be absorption of fluid through the first layer of gauze into, the, into that sandwich layer of granules between the two layers. These will also form a pseudo-like clot. But also what that does between the two layers, is it helps bond those two layers in place, preventing movement such that if the patient is moved, there's very little risk of re-bleed. So we've, in essence, we've got the same properties as the granules, but we're multi-layering those granules up to provide a more stable clot formation. So in essence, again, the granules will absorb fluid, they form a gel-like plug at the bleed site, which creates a, a conducive environment for the natural blood body's clotting system. It will also form a gel barrier between the layers, and which helps adhere not only to the tissue, but also adhere the bandage layers together creating that clot and preventing any re-bleeds during transportation of the patient. So let's summarise how the gauze actually works. On application to the site of bleeding, the blood will be absorbed into the first contact gel layer, where the granules will form the gel and form that pseudo clot. In doing so, the cellulose will also adhere to the surrounding tissue, helping to maintain that clot in place. And Underneath that clot, that pseudo clot, there is the environment, the conducive environment, which has a cationic nature, which will attract red blood cells, aiding the body's clot formation. The bandage is also, once wet, very conformable and also helps ensure there's a intimate contact at that bleed site. By forming an adhesion between the different layers of the gauze, maintains a robust environment to prevent re-bleeding during movement. So in essence, the key performance characteristics are 
The gauze has a high absorbency. It has a cationic nature. It has got good adhesion both to itself and to the surrounding tissue. It forms a gel. It's very conformable. And on both application and removal, there is a very high tensile strength, meaning that the product will not inadvertently tear during application or, or removal, leaving products in place. And it also manages fluid wicking, so it has a good fluid management profile. So let's describe the technology within Cellox and how it benefits over the other hemostatic technologies available on the market. Well, first and foremost, because Cellox works independently of the clotting cascade, it will work on patients as effectively who are on anticoagulants such as warfarin and heparin. The traditional mineral-based gauzes need to kickstart that clotting cascade and where the clotting cascade is deficient due to anticoagulants, the time to hemostasis is significantly longer. Cellux EMS products don't have that problem. They work just as effectively on patients with anticoagulants as those without anticoagulants. It is also fast acting, and in doing so, the granules will absorb fluid and create that gel plug within 30 to 50 seconds. Again, this differentiates, differentiates itself from the mineral-based hemostats or pressure alone, where that clotting cascade is the key mode of action to the clot formation. The adhesion profile of Cellox is also different to the traditional mineral-based hemostats. They traditionally do not have any kind of tissue adhesion to their products and rely solely on the activation of the clotting cascade. Cellox has very good muco adhesion, not only to itself between the gauze layers, but also to the tissue. This keeps it in place, reducing the time that you require for compression. And just in case, any cellulose that's left behind in the wound is naturally reabsorbable. So Kytazan is traditionally known to be broken down by the body into glucosamine, and that is naturally excreted from the body. So let's look at where to use Cellox EMS and focus on, primarily on the indications for use. Under the supervision of a healthcare professional, Cellox EMS hemostatic gauze can be treated for minor external bleeding from wounds and procedures and is indicated for the use as a temporary topical dressing for bleeding control associated with minor wounds, including the control of minor external bleeding and exudate from sutures and or surgical procedures. Under the supervision of a healthcare professional, Cellux EMS hemostatic gauze can also be used for moderate to severe external bleeding wounds and is indicated for the temporary external treatment for controlling moderate to severe bleeding. Unfortunately, there's a lot of trauma in the US and every year thousands of trauma victims die of hemorrhage from either assault, uh, car accidents, workplace and household accidents. And it's the leading cause of death in Americans between the ages of 1 and 46. There's more than 192,000 people in the US that lose their lives due to trauma every year and it counts for 41 million emergency room visits. In 2019, this should be avoidable. In terms of man managing life-threatening hemorrhaging through either gunshots or stab wounds, Cellox can be a very fast-acting product that is cleared to treat moderate to severe bleeding at the first point of treatment and enable, enable that patient to be stabilised and kept alive until they re reach emergency surgical care. So let's look at one of the major key benefits of use for Cellux EMS versus the traditional pressure hemostats or mineral-based hemostats. In certain situations, it may not be practical to get to the casualty quickly, and in doing so, they may go into shock, develop hypothermia, or exhibit some kind of trauma-induced coagulopathy. To complicate matters worse, millions of, of people are on anticoagulants. Anticoagulants are designed to inhibit the clotting formation within the body. This alone makes pressure itself as a treatment regime impractical, and it also results in the use of mineral-based hemostats, which require to kickstart the clotting cascade ineffective. So in making Cellox and developing the Cellox technology to work independently of the clotting cascade, it works very effectively in three scenarios. That's on patients who are medicated with blood thinning drugs such as warfarin, cumidin and or heparin. It also works effectively on patients which exhibit hypothermic blood 
and it also works effectively on patients who exhibit signs of trauma-induced coagulopathy. It therefore makes use that in any situation, the treatment is easier and quicker than traditional remedies. How to apply Celox EMS and the instructions for use. The first point should be to locate where the bleed is coming from. Following this, you should blot away any of the excess blood or fluid from the wound. The Celox is then applied in the pad format directly to the site of bleed. It is then followed by one to three minutes compression, depending on the severity of the bleed. After this compression period, if bleeding still continues, further pressure can be applied for a further three more minutes, unless Celox becomes saturated. In such situations, it would be advisable to remove the Celox and replace with a new dressing. The patient should then be transferred to medical facilities as soon as possible, ensuring that the empty pack of Celox is presented to the medical personnel on delivery. Discard any unused product. So things to consider during the application of Celox EMS. Well, first of all is locate the bleed site. Celox works when it's applied directly over the bleed site, not away from the bleed site. It's also important to apply the product and pressure directly over the bleed site. For low volume, low pressure type of bleeds, use two layers of gauze. And as we described previously, this will help that clot formation and movement, a lack of movement of the product. For higher volume bleeds or higher pressure bleeds, it may be required to use more than two layers. The product can also be easily torn and cut to allow easy application in certain situations. But always remember that the product works by forming a gel plug over the bleed site. And therefore that first point of locating the bleed site is critical. It's important to note that not all clinical providers deliver the same level of care. This may be due to experience, training or other situations. So here's a couple of tips and tricks to think about if you get questions back from the marketplace. So let's look at compression times. The caregiver will become knowledgeable on the requirement of compression. However, not all bleeding is the same. There are lower volume, lower pressure bleeds, higher volume, higher pressure bleeds. So the first part is to apply that one to three minutes of compression. The healthcare provider will generally become knowledgeable that higher pressure, higher volume bleeds may require longer compression time, particularly if the, pro the patient is on anticoagulants. Likewise, for a lower volume, lower pressure type bleeding, it may only require one minute compression. So we generally advocate that one minute to three minute compression time, but it could be longer than that, depending on the situation. In terms of coagulopathic patients, the composition of the blood has changed, making that clot formation underneath the pseudo clot more difficult for the body. It is therefore possible that in patients with high levels of anticoagulants or exhibiting trauma-induced coagulopathy, that you apply a longer compression time just to ensure that that clot is in place. After compression, you should slowly release the pressure from the dressing when taking your hand off the, off the dressing. In doing so, there may be two areas where, where the healthcare professional may observe re-bleeding. Firstly, it's between the, the layers of the, the product and the skin. This will be generally observed at the edge of the dressing. It is normally advised that recompression is applied unless the product is fully saturated. The second potential area where re-bleeding may occur is through the dressing. Again, this is normal and would normally advocate that the level of bleed requires more than one layer of, of dressing. We've discussed previously that on the, as a general rule of thumb, two layers should be the minimum you apply to a bleed site. However, for higher volume, higher pressure bleeds, you may require more than two layers of dressing. It's important when delivering medical device products to the marketplace that you have an understanding of the production and sourcing process. All products within the Celex EMS range have FDA clearance. Looking at the raw materials right through to the fully packed sterilised product, we can see that it's a complex process. At the front end is the raw material manufacturer, and this is 
the removal of the shells on the shellfish through to the chitosan stage. And you can see that it's all done under very controlled procedures. We then move forward to the granule manufacture stage where we convert the chitosan into the cellox salt. And again, this is to full GMP and ISO controlled standards. The, pro the granules are then taken to another facility where they're coated onto the gauze and slipped down to the sizes that you see in the product. These sizes are then packed and sealed and then sent for, sent for sterilization. I hope this presentation has given you a good background into the Celox technology, how it's developed and how we deliver this technology to you in the marketplace. And as such, whether you're an EMS paramedic, EMT, fire service based EMS, you need to make sure you have the best technology available for controlling arterial bleeding and there's nothing better to be equipped with than Celox.